The plug-in principle. This is probably the most important concept that we're going to be going over in the class, but don't stress too much. We're going to be going over it so many times that even if you don't get it on the first try, I'm sure you will get it on the 27th. So let's review a little bit. So what we've done thus far is we've had a population, and we've said that we can take random samples from this population. We talked about two ways to take random samples, with replacement and without replacement. And we know that a random sample consists of some subset of the population. So we might consider this population might be everyone in the United States. And the subset of our population, which we get through a random sample, might just be n equals 20 people. So 20 people are in our random sample. So while this is interesting, this is of no technical use. Uh, what do we want to do with this population? Well, originally we insisted that we were interested in a specific function of the population. So we were interested in a specific function of the population. What function might this be? Uh, this might be, an example might be the average IQ. So we take the average IQ of a population. And this might be very interesting. Uh, for example, you might be studying the United States and you might, instead of looking at average uh, IQ, you might look at average SAT score and see how that compares to other countries. Or you can use some other type of average test. Uh, you can look at average height and see that how, how that compares, or average infant mortality and see how that compares. So obviously, a function of the population, like average IQ, is something we'd be interested in. Uh, we're going to be calling the average IQ for, well, we're going to be calling the function of the population uh, for the rest of this class, theta. It's just sort of a, a Greek letter. So theta is, again, a single number, average IQ, one number, one number of this population. And for the moment, we're going to be dealing with simple one number cases. Okay, what's the problem here? Um, well, we need to talk to every single person in the United States, and we need to give them an IQ test, and then we need to have them complete it, and then we need to record it and average it, right? That, that should be pretty simple. Well, there's over 300 million people in the United States. You know, making them all sit down for a single test, that's going to be one hour. Maybe you assume that average wage is something like 10 bucks an hour. <laughs> much, much more than that. Let's I mean, keep that on a, on a super, super lower range. And so, you know, then basically what you're saying is that we need to spend $3 billion to go ahead and get this information. Uh, that's a lot of money. So what do we do instead? Well, we had an answer before, but we didn't justify the answer. So what was our answer before? The answer was before was, hey, let's go ahead and take this function that we had sort of stipulated above. So in this case, the average IQ function. So in this case, the example is the average IQ. And let's apply it to our sample. And we'll go ahead and we'll get a number back. In this case, it will be theta hat. Now, this seems simple enough. We go ahead, we're interested in average IQ on the population, so we'll go ahead and take the average IQ of the sample. This won't be too expensive, there's only 20 people, maybe it'll be 100, 200, 400 bucks. What's the problem? The problem is, what's to say that theta hat, in, in this case the average IQ of the sample, is anywhere near theta? So, does theta hat need to be anywhere near theta? Well, what if we sampled from a population of five-year-olds? Well, I'm not sure is the, I guess, for an SAT score in this case. Five-year-olds can't really take the SATs. So they would probably get a really, really terrible score. Or if we took a sample of the world's smartest people, so all like, you know, PhD students at this particular university. Well, they would get a very, very high IQ. So these would be biased. They would be bad examples of what the average IQ of the United States would be. And our theta hat, in this case, wouldn't be necessarily representative of theta. So what can we do? Well, fortunately for us, we have one principle that's going to tell us something about theta hat in relation to theta. And take a guess what this is. Ta-da! The plug-in principle. So what does the plug-in principle say? So it says theta hat is the best estimator. It says theta hat is the best estimator of theta given two conditions. Condition number one is that we don't know anything else about the population. So if we had some other information about the population, for example, what type of distribution the population might be, we could go ahead and we can construct a better estimator for theta, for the average IQ. And the second condition in this case is that as n goes to infinity, so as n gets really, really big, as our sample size gets really, really big, theta hat becomes a great estimator for theta. This becomes incredibly important. The plug-in principle will allow us to make great estimates, so theta hat, 
for theta will make us great estimates from the sample to the population, but it will also allow us to classify what our confidence in these estimates are. So if we only sample 20 people in the United States and we're able to get their average height, we can with some confidence say what the average height of people in the United States is, which is magical. And so this will allow us to do lots and lots of powerful stuff later on. Okay, stay tuned. If you didn't understand it, please post questions and comments down below.